You are tuned in to the COVID-19 Community Report on KDRT 95.7 FM in Davis, California. I'm your host, Autumn labbe Renault, and today is Friday, March 20th, 2020. This show airs live at noon on Tuesdays and Fridays and repeats at 5 p.m. both days. I'll continue it over the coming weeks as the COVID-19 pandemic continues to unfold. And you can also listen online at kdrt.org. My intention with this show is to provide a mix of community updates, local information, and call-ins from elected officials, community activists, and other leaders. Our guests today are Superintendent John Bowes of the Davis Joint Unified School District and Kate Mellon Anibaba, founder of the COVID-19 YOLO Community Response Group on Facebook. Throughout the show, I'll share a compendium of local resources, which I'll also post to the show's page at kdrt.org, along with the show archive, and you can contact me there as well. Since I did the show on Tuesday, a shelter-in-place order was given, first city-by-city, then county-wide, and as of last night, statewide. We're all dealing with uncertainty and fear, and many are trying to figure out how to carry out our work lives from home with loved ones and pets underfoot. Others are alone and maybe truly isolated, and this is where our neighbor-to-neighbor networks and our other social networks will, will save the day. I'll be honest, our first DMA staff meeting via Google Hangout this week was not seamless, but I'm happy to report that channels 15 and 17, as well as KDRT, are on the air and being managed remotely. Much gratitude to DMA staff who makes that happen. Unfortunately, our friends at KDVS 90.3 FM, the campus station at UC Davis, are not faring as well. Station management announced March 18th it was shuttering the station for the foreseeable future, and they are off the air. They don't have automation, and with the campus shut down, they can't come in to manage their operations. We're reaching out to them. However, we're not sure how FCC rules may limit how we can help them, but I'll update this item when I can. I have time for a few announcements before our first interview, and I particularly want to highlight the Davis Farmers Market. There was some confusion when the market announced earlier this week that its Picnic in the Park social on Wednesday evenings was canceled until May 13th. While the bands, bouncy houses, and food vendors won't be there, the farmers are. Winter hours will continue until further notice, and those are Wednesdays from 3 to 6 p.m. and Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Market manager Randy McNear said the booths have been spaced further apart, and they continue to follow standards from the state and county health department, which are updated almost daily. Many farmers are now offering pre-packed grab-and-go options. Certified farmers markets are an essential part of our community's food security, and even under statewide shelter-in-place measures, markets are exempt. You can find out more at davisfarmersmarket.org. Yolo Food Bank has stepped up in a big way, and they're out there delivering food to many who are now shut in. This has placed a tremendous burden on their available resources, and they're in urgent need of people to help deliver food, and they have many other needs as well. Call them at 530-668-0690 or visit yolofoodbank.org. And here's something I learned about just this morning. The California Department of Education has developed the California Meals for Kids mobile app to help families find nearby California after-school and summer meal program sites. It's accessible on iOS, Android, or Microsoft devices, and available wherever you download mobile apps. The emergency meal site section may be used during unanticipated school closures, such as we're all dealing with right now. I'm not yet sure about its availability in languages other than English, but I plan to contact them and and ask that question. In the meantime, questions can be directed to CDE Mobile. M-O-B-I-L-E at C-D-E dot C-A dot gov. Okay, please enjoy a little music while I get set up for our call with DJ USD Superintendent John Bowes in just a minute. Hello? Thank you so much for joining us. 
Hello, Superintendent Bose. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you and the community. Thank you. Uh, I can't even imagine how much the school district is dealing with right now. Last week, you had to announce to the community that schools would be closed through April 7th. This week, Governor Newsom said we very likely need to prepare to not return until after summer break. I know there was a school board meeting last night, so what can you tell the community about this evolving situation? Sure. The rapid rise in confirmed coronavirus cases across the state and nation, I think, reinforces the need for um, the shelter-in-place order from Yolo County that was issued on Wednesday mm -hmm. and also punctuates the need for changes in our individual and our collective efforts um, at home, at work, um, to slow the spread of COVID-19 by doing two things, avoiding large gatherings and increasing social distance. And I want to say uh, this to the, the community and our families. Uh, we will get through this together uh, by working together. Um, I want to recognize uh, our Board of Education, who last Friday uh, provided me the authorization so I could evaluate and make the decision to uh, close schools and also to uh, the leaders from Davis Teachers Association and the California School Employees Association. Uh, they represent our teachers and all the support staff that keep our schools and district running. And they've been great partners in uh, the hard work we've been at the last couple of weeks uh, as this paradigm shift uh, and how we provide instruction occurs. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm aware that the school district um, is under, has been discussing uh, releasing some resources uh, for families and for teachers and trying to figure out ways for them to work together remotely. What can you tell us about the status of that, please? Sure. So I think it's important to realize that we will very likely be uh, in a school closure situation beyond the spring break. Mm -hmm. In fact, right now, over 98% of students are ca in California are not in school. Um, the governor, you know, as you said, mentioned this on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. um, some good news for schools, but also, I think, confirming we may be in for a much longer closure than initially anticipated was the recent passage of Senate Bill 117, which really cleared the way for districts across the state to develop uh, the sort of long-term solutions we're working on and having some confidence that the needed funding and resources mm -hmm. uh, are in place to do that. Um, you will see later today um, the launch of the first of two phases of instruction okay. uh, that we'll be providing our staff, uh, our families, and our students. And consistent with um, State Superintendent Tony Thurman's uh, comments to superintendents across the state uh, on Wednesday, uh, we are focused on a solution that uh, revolves around equity, access, and innovation. Uh, for sure, distance learning will look different everywhere. Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure that with a digital solution, every student in Davis Joint Unified has access to a device. And we have a plan in place to address uh, what we call the digital divide faced by many of our students and families who are the furthest from opportunity. Mm -hmm. If a student or a family needs a Chromebook or internet access, we have one for them, and we'll get that to them. But it is critical uh, that every student have a device so they can access instruction during the closure. Um, in Davis, um, we all belong. And this has also been the guiding principle. As we develop a short-term phase one digital content solution, which will be released in just the next few hours, mm -hmm. And then a longer term, what we call phase two distance learning program that will serve uh, our instruction purposes for the long haul. 
so as I said, a website uh, called our Home Learning website with uh, supplementary materials and resources for students and families to voluntarily access at home will come out in just the next few hours. Okay. Uh, and that will take us through spring break. Now, at the same time during uh, this week and the next couple of weeks, we're utilizing uh, this time in the spring break to plan for our long-term distance learning program. And we have learned that careful and thoughtful investments of time and energy that involve our teachers and administrators, the experts uh, in instruction, uh, and the creation of instructional programming has produced superior teaching and learning experiences and outcomes. Uh, so our teachers and administrators uh, on the team designing this are literally creating materials from scratch, building up the infrastructure that has not existed before, but is needed to sustain us through an extended school closure. Yeah, this is a uh, mammoth are, problem. We, we have never encountered this before in our, in our modern times anyway. It, it is a paradigm shift and uh, immediately challenging districts across the county, state, and nation to, uh, in the moment, reimagine and retool instruction uh, in a new 21st century uh, paradigm. And events are changing uh, more rapidly, I think, than anyone could have anticipated. Definitely. Uh, the community can expect a regular series of messages uh, from me, both on our constant contact email system, mm -hmm. uh, through social media, and web page updates. We are updating our web page daily. And okay. you can just go to the front page of the DJUSD uh, website for any immediate update. And then we have a coronavirus or COVID-19 uh, dedicated page uh, with more details. Great. And how will the, uh, the Board of Trustees continue to meet during this time? Will there be a move to uh, remote meetings? So that was a question we explored at last night's board meeting, which was held in community chambers. Mm. Uh, four or five trustees were in attendance physically, and one trustee calling in. Uh, Governor Newsom has waived many of the Brown Act requirements, such as needing to have three physical people uh, in the meeting room to uh, attain a quorum or a majority of trustees. Um, so we're exploring with the city uh, the viability of uh, using Zoom or WebEx or Skype or some other digital solution. Uh, the purpose of a board meeting is to conduct the board's business in public. And to the extent possible, we want to be able to continue to stream and capture the meetings uh, so that they are available for view uh, by the citizens uh, and our families here in Davis. At the same time, we want to do our best to support the county health office's initiative to reduce opportunities for large gatherings and to increase social distance. And as an example, in my constant contact earlier this week, uh, I urge people to please view online and to send any public comment to the Board of Education uh, email address. Uh, we had seven uh, comments that we read into the record last night. So there are ways to participate okay. remotely in a meeting without actually having to be there. Great. I want to thank you for coming on and sharing these important updates. We're going to get ready for our next call. But uh, also, I assure you, I'll continue sharing uh, the information I get from you out via the show and, and the website. So thank you again. And this has been Superintendent John Bowes with the Davis Joint Unified School District. Thank you for the opportunity mm -hmm. to speak with you and the community. All right, thanks. I appreciate it. Bye. Bye. Okay. We will be getting ready for our next call, and I think we have just a little bit of music before that happens. Okay, we're hoping to get another call soon. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and read an announcement. Here's a bit more on getting people fed. Davis Night Market is open with new rules to conform to social distancing. The nonprofit provides free food for people suffering from food insecurity and hunger. 
Market or- organizers said that many people have benefited from the food they distribute, and they believe they're covering basic needs for an important number of them. They have decided to continue holding the night market on Tuesdays and Thursdays with some modifications, and they asked people to observe the following. If you need food, come. If you don't need to, please do not come. Social distancing will be observed, and participants are asked to leave the park. This is Central Park in downtown Davis, where the farmer's market is held. Leave the park immediately after receiving food. You can find Davis Night Market on Facebook and Instagram. Okay, uh, we are expecting a call from one of the community organizers here in town, but until that moment, I am going to go ahead and keep sharing uh, what what I am calling resource listings. And I make these available on the KDRT website at kdrt.org, uh, along with the show record, which is a digital stream and, and recording. It's downloadable um, of this show and, and many others on KDRT. I want to take a moment, too, to give a shout-out to all the volunteers who make KDRT run 24-7 all year long. And we've been doing this since 2004 as a low-power community, truly hyper-local grassroots radio station. Uh, These outlets are important in these times when we need all the local news and information we can get. And that's why I'm sitting here in a facility that is essentially closed to everyone else. All right, another listing for today. Uh, Yolo County Supervisor Jim Provenza shared this morning that at this time the county is enforcing Yolo County shelter-in-place order. County Council is researching whether or not there are any conflicts with the governor's order, and if so, how to handle it. For now, he said everyone is safe so long as they follow Yolo County's order. And I encourage everyone to visit the county's website at yolocounty.org. All the information pertaining to COVID-19 and the shelter-in-place order is spotlighted there. And uh, it's really, it's right on the front page, and and it's a whole lot of information for you. All right, continuing on. International House Davis is conducting a community survey to gather information. I'm going to come back to that item because our caller is coming through. All right. Last week, community organizer Kate Mellon Anibaba started a Facebook group called COVID-19 YOLO Community Response. It quickly grew from dozens to a few thousand members. It's been a place where people can ask for or offer help, and it's truly been inspiring. In fact, it's what sparked me to do this particular radio show. She's with us today to talk about the experience. Welcome, Kate. Hi, Autumn. Thank you so much for having me. So glad you're here. So what prompted you to start this group? Um, so I, um, you know, I think everyone was talking about what they were doing for their families. And um, I was seeing a lot of um, people, you know, hoarding things. I was definitely earlier trying to think about, oh, if I have to stay home and I'm sick, like I had my dad go get a bunch of um, water and soup. Mm-hmm. Um, but nothing like the crazy hoarding that we were seeing um, progressively through this um you know, pandemic. Um, and so there was one night after work and I had just kind of heard a lot of people saying what they were doing for themselves and their family. And this is so scary. And what am I doing? And what am I holding on to? And um, it just was really um, very focused on themselves. And so um, I was trying to think of, you know, where's the community thinking? Um, mm-hmm. When, some, when a community is sick, we all live in a community. So when a community is sick, you're only as healthy as the most vulnerable. Um, I, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, but I knew that it was really frustrating me, and I like to organize, and I like to bring people in when I'm frustrated. Right. Kind of my thing. And so um, I saw a post from, um, you know, uh, Rob Davis, and I saw a post from Don Saylor, and they were talking about, you know, thinking collectively, thinking as a community, what are we going to need to do? And I just took that and I ran with it. Um, I started a little, you know, chat group on Facebook and Mm -hmm. it grew really fast. So then I turned it into a page and here we are. Um, (laughs) And and you probably never respected such a response. The last time I looked, there were well over 3,000 members. No, yeah. um, Every couple of days we get about 1,000 new people added. Um, That's how new this group is. Um, You know, it is big, but we're probably in the next couple of days going to hit about 4,000. You know, um, Anoush um, and 
to Jorian and Emily Hill stepped in quickly to help me with the organizing because it got so big so fast. Right. Um, which was amazing. Let, let's talk about that for a minute because you have a, a, a number of people identified as moderators. And I, I really appreciate, because I'm going through this book and, and looking for resource listings that I can then share with others. And I really appreciate yes. how everything is, is tagged. So how yeah, many moderators um, and what does it take <laughs> to keep this going? Yes, um, this is a huge part of why this group is so successful. And it, um, it almost chokes me up to see um, the little behind the scenes of how this works. I wish everyone could kind of um, get in there, but, you know, that's, that's not the purpose of it. Um, we have myself as an admin and a new historian who have been a huge part in, um, you know, kind of keeping everybody organized um, within our own moderator group. Um, our moderators include Emily Hill, Devin Adams, Leah Dara, Alyssa Hickerman, Adrian Ritchie, Joanna Reisner, Ruby Cosgrove, Natalie Moo, Sophia um, Osacampo, um, and then uh, Natalie Tesserina, and then, of course, my mom, Dory Nolan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we have a huge group. Um, we have so many skills that we bring to the table collectively. We have a scientist, a person that works in healthcare, a librarian, community organizers, um, analysts, small business owners. Um, we're on top of it. And we've been praised for our information being accurate. We've, um, you know, we do a lot of vetting, making sure people are in Yolo County. Um, we want this group to be useful, and to be useful, we have to work super, super hard to keep it that way. Yeah. Um, we have folks putting in so many hours. It's almost like a business. The way we're structured, um, everyone has their talents. We bring um, issues back to our own mod group um, to discuss and figure out what we're doing. People are having to deal with fighting on this group at 3 a.m. and folks are stepping up. It's incredible. <laughs> um, I want to point out one thing. We are a group of um, all women except for one. Um, and I'm not surprised at how amazing this is because of that. Um, we are, you know, a well-oiled machine. And um, again, we're, we're taking on this task, but we're also, a lot of us have full-time jobs. We have children that we're figuring out how to take care of right now. And doing this, we're we're amazing, right? I I know you yourself have two very young children, so uh, I I just want to thank you and uh, and and thank all the moderators and and really all the participants. I have seen such kindness and generosity coming forth in this group. And really, that's, you know, that's a beacon of hope for us all right now. There's also a lot of information and so much of it is, is daunting as we're getting reports from the, you know, from the county supervisors are sharing information and county health is sharing information. But again, the, the kindness, the, the generosity and the, and the people looking out for each other is phenomenal. Yeah, I just I had one last thing um, that I wanted to say. You know, we see that a vast majority of us are all having similar worries at this time and mm -hmm. are scared. Um, we're worried about our finances, um, getting factual information, um, our families, uh, resource accessibility. Um, you know, folks that are you know uh, having you know food scarcity, but also folks that have plenty of money, but they're just looking for toilet paper. It's a huge topic. Right. Um, it is. <laughs> yeah, you know, we must remain calm and vigilant um, and not wait to ask for help, but also not wait to offer help. And that doesn't mean just offering money. That means offering, you know, figuring out projects. That means um, stepping into volunteer roles. A lot of this stuff is going to be done, you know, behind a, a phone, behind a computer, um, you know, not face-to-face -face organizing, but we're going to have to find ways to funnel all this fantastic community energy into productive projects. Right. Um, so, you know, we created this network to benefit all our communities. No one is alone. We want everyone to know that you may be isolated, but there's many people that are feeling exactly like you. Um, please reach out. Please join the group. Um, you know, you can always, you know, silence the group and check in with it if it's overwhelming. You can always search topics. You do a great job of labeling things that you're, you might be interested in. Um, you know, we have a huge, strong, amazing community in these unusual times, and we need to, you know, harness that, and this is, is, this is a space. Yeah. Thank you again so much for your work and for calling in. And take care, and I'll see you online. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Autumn. This is a fantastic All right. resource. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Again, that was Kate Mellon Anibaba, the uh, initial organizer of the COVID-19 YOLO Community Response Group on Facebook, and you can search that there.
So I have a lot of other resource listings to share and very, very little time. So I am going to say again that they will be at the show record um, at kdrt.org. And I'll be back next Tuesday when my guests will be Davis Poet Laureate James Lee Job, Elizabeth Gray from the Yolo County Library, and business blogger Heidi Kellison of downtown NorCal. Next Friday, we'll check in with Yolo County Supervisor Don Saylor and also hear from someone at Yolo Public Health. Stay home, wash your hands, be kind. From the KDRT studio, I'm Autumn Labbe-Renault, and this has been the COVID-19 Community Report.